Oh boy, Pokemon X and Y is coming out so soon. I can hardly wait to do a wedlock challenge. Oh, we'll be recording. It'll be so cool. Wait. To do that, I'll need a 3DS that can record. To the internet! get a 3DS, and I send it to Salt Lake, this guy will modify it for me so I can record 3DS footage! Excellent! I'm gonna need a 3DS to Craigslist! Alright, 3DS, 70 bucks, I can do that. Hello? Would you sell the 3DS? Excellent, excellent! Uh, so, uh-huh. Alright, great, I'll meet you in uh, Pizza Hut in half an hour. Let's go. Hey, hey! Hey, kid. Hey. You got the money? Yeah, it's right here. Come on, let's do the deal back over here. This one. 60 and 70 like we agreed. All right. I got something for you, kid. Your DS. Perfect, thanks. Hey, wait, kid. I got something else for you. Oh, yeah? yeah. All right. Oh, thank you very much. So, that's a true story. And I have no clue how I didn't get killed. But I got a 3DS. And I gave a quick look through the pictures, and I found one of him smoking pot. So, I'm even more glad that I didn't get jabbed. But one complaint that I have is that the games he gave me, they're probably some of the worst DS games of all time. But hey, if I'm going to endure these atrocities, you're coming with me. So I proudly announce Games I Got for Druggy Part 1, Magic School Bus Oceans. Released in 2011 by Scholastic Games, Magic School Bus Oceans is a game that explores the ocean. Yep, about what you'd expect. What I wouldn't expect is a game to come out 14 years after the TV series was discontinued. I mean, the books come out along with games, but the show that I really remember liking as a kid ended in 1997. But how's the game? Reviews and info for the game don't actually exist. But one of the best ways to gauge how good something was is its price after some time has passed. And regular prices are from $4 to $20, which is a similar price for Mario and Luigi, Partners in Time. All right, let's fire up. And right off, it seems pretty basic. But unfortunately, all the player spots are full, and I can't erase any of them because that'd be like deleting their souls from history. So I'll pick LNNMO. So it takes me to the story, and we're already in a full out disaster. The school parent night is tonight, and the room isn't set up. In fact, we haven't even studied the ocean as of yet. Which I wouldn't put on the kids' heads, but Mrs. Frizzle. That should be easy enough. Top, middle, bottom. There. Now your parents won't know how little Miss Frizzle does her job as a teacher. Where is she, anyway? Miss Frizzle, where have you been? These kids are freaking out because the room isn't ready for parent night, and they haven't learned a dang thing, and you're out surfing? Let's dive right in. It's time to take chances, make mistakes, and get wet. What? And here's where I get to customize my appearance, because apparently, I'm the driver. Yeah? Oh, yeah, we'll need one of these. Oh, that is handsome! Uh-huh. Oh, one of those. And... Perfect. It's a work of art! I hope one day I can send a child off at school and that the driver looks half as competent as L-N-N-M-O. And since I'm the driver, I do a little mini-game by tracing designs with stylus to drive the bus. Now, let's do this safely. Oh shoot! Trash! Uh, okay, uh, uh, jump over it. S stopping at red lights? That, that, that's respectable. And driving straight into the ocean. Okay, that's cool. Whatever. So here's where the core of the game happens. It's split into six parts of the ocean, and we start in the intertidal zone, and work down to the depths of hell where the freaky freaks live. Now, first we get to learn about four animals by clicking on them, like the black laced benny and the green crab. And then some facts about them, um, so let's check out the sea urchin. The mouth of the sea urchin on the underside has five hollow teeth, each with a tongue inside. The sea urchins do not have eyes. They sense light with their tube feet. 
After you learn facts about the animals, you get to click on them to play games. The games are about as basic as they come. First, the urchin game, you navigate to collect yellow dots while some animals try and eat you, and you have to fight them with your HORRIFYING URCHIN ARMS! And then there's another game with the green crab, where you hold the A button and walk back and forth while trying to avoid branches. Another game is where you have a ton of animals walk by, and you have to pick the ones that match the description, like all the ones that have shells. And finally, trace the picture to form an animal. This animal has a round body, a spine, tubed feet. This animal is a nightmare. So I get 10 points for each game, and after I get 80 points, Miss Frizzle quizzes me about the inner title zone animal. Which animal has something inside its teeth that moves? After that, I'm allowed to progress to the coral reef by performing several dangerous movements. Watch out for the muscles! Seriously, bus, go around! Don't, don't, don't walk on them! Don't go through the seaweed! Go around it! Ugh. And with a huge patch of rocks, it doesn't even pretend to care about its own hole. It just powers straight on through it. Idiot. Now we get to learn about four more animals. The pufferfish, moray eels, clownfish, and the parrotfish. Almost all pufferfish contain a toxin that makes them foul-tasting and often lethal to fish. There is enough toxin in one pufferfish to kill 30 humans. Well, thank goodness urchins don't have access to that kind of power. They'd probably go out of their environments to hunt us. And then we have more games to play. Some of them are old games, and two of them are new ones. We have Trace... A really bad version of Feeding Frenchy, which works backwards, which can be pretty hard at the beginning, because you are a huge fish, and the ones that can eat you are even huger! And then we have a truly terrible game for three reasons. One, it doesn't give you as many points as the others. Two, you only have five seconds and a small amount of light to determine the fish that you saw. And third, it's not even a fish that they've introduced to you yet! Um, I don't know. You've only shown me like four. It looked kind of like the bubble guys from Finding Nemo. But no, it was the Emperor Angelfish. Well, how am I supposed to know that? And then there's another game where they don't give you the information and just expect you to know what animals are carnivores and which ones are herbivores. How should I know? You haven't introduced me to any of these guys. I, I don't know what this is. Well, whatever it is, it doesn't eat plants. After earning 220 points from 15 point games, we go deeper down into the continental shelf after performing several questionable maneuvers with the bus. Except that, that is completely illogical. Nobody wants to mess with an octopus. Those things, those guys will mess you up. I mean, they, they eat sharks and nothing eats sharks. New area, four more animals. And I just want to take a moment to question something. All right, all the info on these animals is told by the kids, and this is some deep knowledge about the animals. I want to know how they know so much about the animals, but not the simple areas of the ocean, or at least enough to convince their parents that Miss Frizzle has actually been doing her job. Anyway, we got facts and games. Trace, sword animals, feeding frenzy, navigate and find the dots. This is the worst part of the game. You see, I'm actually finding the facts about the animals very intriguing, but I have to play through some of the most mundane and boring minigames to progress. All right, so I need 400 points and these games only give me 20. So I play nine more games I've already played before and then I drive recklessly. Now we get the open ocean where the mammals of the sea live, and we've got another navigation game, feeding frenzy, low point, discovery game, and of course, sorting. Find the animals that are fish. That's a tough one, but I think I can do it. Find animals that have tentacles. Whoa, that seems like a pretty tough one. I better call Google on for some help. wasn't very appropriate. And now we're getting to the freaky deeks, like the giant two worms, dandelion animals, and yeti crabs. And as I mentioned, the facts are actually very interesting. For example, the yeti crab is so unique that a new family of animal had to be created to classify them. 
But now I have to play through a bunch of stupid games so I can learn more. But I can perform an epic maneuver in one of the games. I'm so cool. Finally, to the depths of the ocean floor. All I have to do is learn about the scariest monsters this planet has ever created, and I'm on my way. Oh, what a letdown. We only have the anglerfish and the viperfish. I guess the viperfish is scary enough, since its teeth can't fit in its mouth. But seriously, teach us about the stoplight loose jaw or the goblin shark. So now that I've learned all the facts, I could just quit. But I can't leave the kids down here, so I have to earn an additional 500 points at 35 per game. Which means 15 games of Trace the Deep Sea Freak, Viperfish Run, collect 35 dots as a giant squid, and earn 10 points for guessing an animal that we haven't taught you about yet. Then back to school. In no time at all, we decorate the room, fill in the ocean chart, and convince the parents that tax money is well spent and that no one was put in moral peril. I sure hope I didn't startle you with that. I was just trying to capitalize by how horrifying the deep sea creatures are. Seriously, Google deep sea fish and, and you'll get you'll get some scary stuff. Anyway, um, this is going to be a three-part series, so uh, I know I'm gonna make another video that uh, has to do with the games that the druggie gave me, so I'll put the annotation here. It'll lead there once it's done. I, I have no clue when that'll be, though. Um, I also have my most recent video. I feel it's the best video I've done yet. It is the top 10 rocks. Um, I also have a Let's Play channel. Um, right now we're doing the um, Pokemon Sapphire uh, Nuzlocke, and it's 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 going terrible. I, I just lost my starter. I wonder if I'll be able to pull through this. Um, and the top 10 canonical Fire Emblem relationships. Uh, th that's a video that I made a while ago, and it's getting actually pretty high up there with the views. So if you know, if you like the game Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, go ahead and check out what I thought characters would have been married as. Like, it's only opinion pieces, so please try not to bite my head off if we have differing opinions. Oh, thank you very much. You're such a kind man. Wait, kid. I got something else for you. It's a murder! No! <laughs>